Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online series 2 VGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'm going to be trying out the team that Wolf Glick used to win the Orlando Regional Championships, which is the largest Pokemon VGC in-person tournament in the history of the game. It's a Parish Trap team featuring Screamtail and Gothitelle, but it also has a lot of offense from Pokemon like Arcanine, Palafin, and Fluttermane. As always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps down in the description below. And thank you so much, as always, for joining me. If you do appreciate the video, I would really appreciate if you consider leaving a like on it or subscribing to the channel. It really helps me out a ton. And before we get started with this one, I just wanted to say a huge congratulations to Wolf. You know, Wolf and I have known each other for over a decade. We met way back in 2011, and he's just one of my best friends, both inside and outside of Pokemon. He's one of the hardest working people I know. He is so intelligent and so kind, and I, it just makes me so proud to see him do so, so well, both on YouTube in terms of, you know, the content that he's been making and obviously winning this regional championship as well. He really loves this game, and as someone who's known him for a long time, I'm just so proud to see all that hard work that he's put in pay off. And, you know, he just claimed the seventh regional championship victory. It's so so inspiring to me because I'm at five wins and I haven't you know won a regional since 2017 I'm like I want to go back and start competing again and try to you know catch up and get a little bit closer to him and so yeah I mean from the bottom of my heart it's so inspiring congratulations Wolf for all your success and I hope I can do this team a little bit of justice at least so thanks for joining me as always guys and let's get started so to preface things, I think this team is really difficult to pilot. You know, I think that very few people, if any, in the world have as much experience with Parish Song as Wolf does. And so, like I mentioned, I'm going to do my best to do the team justice. But yeah, this is not a very intuitive team to pilot. And so it's funny. I know after Wolf won the regionals, everyone's like, oh, this is going to be so annoying to play on ladder. But I honestly think that this is not an easy team to just pick up and kind of start playing immediately with. Uh, and it will take you a lot of time, I think, especially if you haven't played like Parish oriented strategies uh, to understand kind of all the nuances. So I just want to preface with that. So let's start off with Screamtail, which is, you know, I think one of the most interesting Pokemon on this team. This is a boost your energy set. Now, Screamtail is not very common in terms of Paradox usage, but this set I think is just so brilliant. I think when this Pokemon was introduced, a lot of people thought about it as a potential Trick Room user, which seems kind of counterintuitive given its base speed, but, it, you know, it just has really solid defenses across the board. And Wolf decided to use a booster energy set. Now, why is booster energy such a big deal? With this, you essentially outspeed everything in the format that doesn't have an opposing speed boost, right? And so that means that the Screamtail can outspeed opposing Flutter Mains and Iron Bundles. That's really sweet because, for example, Fluttermane is just a really strong Pokemon, and if you look at this team, like, Ghost just looks really strong against everything, right? So you're thinking, okay, how do you actually beat opposing Fluttermanes? Well, you've got Screamtail plus Palafin, and this is a really unique combination where Palafin can just use Baby Jet Punch before he even transforms. With the Mystic Water, Screamtail can just play rough into the opposing Fluttermane, and you have a very good chance of just getting a knockout with that combination. If you go for a Terra on the Palafin, it's a guaranteed knockout, essentially. And so it's a, such a unique way of dealing with the Pokemon that otherwise is so problematic and hard to fight against in this format due to, you know, the pure amount of speed and offense that it has. The booster energy also enables Disable, and Disable is such a big deal when you use Parish Trap because when you, you know, get the Parish Song off, you're looking to just protect and stall out your opponent, and so Disable is really essential in just shutting down a critical attack, right? Especially because, like, the Screamtail is paired with Gothitelle. Gothitelle, of course, traps your opponents in. Imagine you have, like, you're going up against King Gambit. King Gambit tries to Kowtow Cleave as you double protect, then you can Disable the Kowtow Cleave, allowing Gothitelle to just go for any attack the subsequent turn then you can just double protect again and stall out Parish song for example so i think this set is so smart and i think the last thing to call out is that it actually has play rough right and so scream to obviously doesn't look like a very offensive pokemon it's only got base 65 attack but play rough is pretty essential into one knocking out opposing flutter mains it's really valuable into roaring moon for example and it's good in just dealing chip damage into a lot of pokemon in the format like brute bonnet as well and so fairy coverage can still be pretty strong and even though this thing's base attack is fairly low it actually still can do meaningful damage in the right matchups. And so, yeah, I think this is just such a smart way to utilize this Pokemon. Now, given that this is a Parish Trap team, we should talk about Gothitelle. Gothitelle is one of my all-time favorite Pokemon. It's one of Wolf's all-time favorite Pokemon as well. This Pokemon did super, super well at Orlando Regionals. In terms of overall usage, not many people used it, but it performed incredibly well, and many players managed to get into the top 32 with it. And so the main value of Gothitelle is, of course, Shadow Tag. 
Gothitelle is a little bit more popular right now, I feel like, because both Golden Go and Meowskarada usage have decreased since Scarlet and Violet VGC was first introduced, and that's because some of the Paradox Pokemon, like the Iron Bundle and the Fluttermane, just match up pretty well into those two that I just mentioned, and so the meta has shifted to a point where Gothitelle can kind of come into play a little bit more, which I makes me really happy since I love this Pokemon. And so... This got to tell is basically designed to, you know, uh, use the shadow tag, but you've got fake out for disruption, uh, which is actually really nice because you can just fake out Parish Song with one of your two Parish users. You've also got Psychic for just general damage and heal pulse. You know, a lot of Gothitelles throughout Sword and Shield actually didn't even run, like, an offensive attack, or maybe they run Foul Play. I actually really like Psychic on here, because Gothitelle's base special attack is actually pretty decent. This gives you good coverage into fighting-type Pokemon, like Iron Hands, for example, and it also allows you to just chip away at things that have low special defense. And so, pretty straightforward. The Water Terra here helps a lot, especially against, like, Golden Go, for example, because you can resist the Make It Rain. And so, Gothitelle plus Screamtail, strong combo. Another Trick Room, or sorry, another Parish Song user here is Fluttermane. This is a fairly standard Fluttermane, but the one thing to call out here is the Grass Terra. I think Fluttermane's a Pokemon that doesn't really want an offensive Terra most of the time anyway, and so where Grass really comes in handy is allowing you to ignore opposing Rage Powders, which is really nice, and also giving you kind of the immunity to Spore from Amoongus or Brubonnet, for example. And so, yeah, it makes sense because it's like, well, okay, there's not really anything else to Terra this into. Grass can be super, super valuable, whereas I think with Fluttermane, you don't really need like a other like defensive Terra, for example, since it's already fairly frail, and gra Grass still gives you like some good coverage, right? And so, yeah, I think it's really smart, and this is just kind of maximizing your damage output. And so it's interesting because when you look at this team, you would probably think, oh, it's all about Parish Song. But the reality is that there is so much offense, actually, that you just might not notice. The first is obviously Fluttermane with max special attack and max speed with the Moonblast and Shadow Ball. This is just one of the strongest attackers in the game. But you also have Arcanine with max attack. Now, this Arcanine set was kind of designed to beat Golden Go. If you look at this team, I earlier mentioned, hey, Ghost-type Pokemon can be pretty problematic. Well, Fluttermane, there's one answer to it with this combination immediately. Golden Go, this is really going to be your best answer. Even if Golden Go has, like, max HP investment and no defense investment, Arcanine can get a one-hit knockout onto it with Flare Blitz pretty much almost all the time. And if Golden Go does not have max HP investment or doesn't have defense investment, you will just get a one-hit knockout onto them. And so it's so smart because, basically, I think when Wolf was composing this team, he was is like, okay, you know, Golden Go, I'm kind of weak into, and a lot of Arcanines, you know, just run, like, four attack investment, they'll have, like, max HP, max speed, but recognizing, like, Golden Go is so good into this team, bumping the EVs and attack all the way to max attack makes it so much better to fight against, and so EVs can go such a long way in team building, especially when you're looking for ways to patch up matchups against certain Pokemon, and this is, I think, one of the best examples of it. This set is also just offensive, right? You've got Flare Blitz and Extreme Speed. Sometimes you'll see Snarl on these uh, Arcanines, but this set just allows you to maximize damage output. Extreme Speed's really nice. I've had games where you just, like, Flare Blitz into a Volcarona and then Extreme Speed to finish it off, which is really cool. And then Will-O-Wisp is just really nice given all the physical attackers in the game. Helps you kind of stall out your opponent's damage output as you try to perish them as well. Safety Goggles to counter things like Amoongus and Brute Bonnet. And then Water Terra here uh, defensively, which is actually really valuable into, like, Dondozo, for example, which was relevant in the finals of Orlando regionals. Finally, we've got Palafin. This is a very offensive Palafin, which is pretty standard, but, you know, the basic idea here is that you don't have Haze, you have Close Combat. Close Combat just gives you a little bit more coverage, and I think fundamentally one of the problems with Palafin is when people use, like, triple water type attack on it, or maybe they have Haze over Close Combat. And the problem there is that, like, you just don't have any coverage into certain types, right? And so Close Combat is nice because it allows you to hit Dark type Pokemon or Steel type Pokemon, and so that can be things like Steel Golden Go after they Terra or Brute Bonnet, for example, which is really valuable. I think the main thing call out with Palafin on this team is don't discount this in baby form. You can actually get a lot of valuable damage off just with Mystic Water Jet Punch, especially if you water Terra, but even without Terra, you can chip away at things fairly quickly with this. And so I think when people see Palafin, they think I have to switch out immediately, but I think this team maximizes like how much value you can get out of it, especially making your opponent think you're going to switch out and then just punching them immediately. Final Pokemon is Amoongus, pretty straightforward here. Main thing to call out is Mentor, which is so nice because a fair amount of Pokemon are running Taunt right now. You've got Dark Terra defensively, which is really helpful into like Indie Armor Rouge, for example, and uh, you've got Pollen Puff here as well. Uh, this team has Heal Pulse and Pollen Puff, and so one thing that's really nice is you can like switch around a lot, right? And so even if your Pokemon take a little bit of damage, it's really difficult to knock out often because of the amount of bulk that all these Pokemon have, and a single Pollen Puff or a single Heal Pulse can go a long way. Also, don't discount the amount of damage that you can do with Pollen Puff into the Things like Brute Bonnet or using it just to break focus sashes, for example. So, 
honestly, there's so many ways to play with this team. I would recommend you watching some of the VODs of Wolf playing through the tournament to really get a better understanding of it. In my experience, like I think like Palafin and Screamtail is a fun lead if you see an opposing Fluttermane, for example. I, I think like Got the Tell plus the Fluttermane, Got the Tell plus Screamtail is really strong if they don't have a ghost type Pokemon, so you can just start perishing them immediately. Uh, Got the Tell plus Arcanine applies some offensive pressure with Fake Out immediately. And if you trap a physical attacker in, you can intimidate them, burn them, and then really make them miserable, for example. And so those are just some of the leads that I've gone with while using this team. I think Arcanine plus really like Palafin, Arcanine plus Fluttermane are also quite strong. So yeah. Anyway, spent a little bit more time talking about it, but I think it's just a team that has so many fun and strong intricacies. And so let's quickly highlight some weaknesses. So in terms of how you can potentially beat this team, the first thing I'll highlight is just simply Ghost Pokemon or Ghost Terra. The main reason for that is because they're immune to Got the Tell Shadow Tag, and so you can actually switch out, which is really valuable because it kind of ruins, you know, the main point of trapping Pokemon in with Shadow Tag and Perish Song. And even if, you know, only one of your Pokemon can switch out, that's still really valuable because it makes it so much harder to actually get to an end game scenario where you can win, right? And so think about Ghost Type Pokemon. Golden goes really good into this team, but obviously struggles a lot against Arcanine, and Wolf's Arcanine is designed in a way to beat Golden Go. You can consider, like, a defensive Terra. I was thinking, like, running a super defensive Golden Go with Nasty Plot and Leftovers could be really interesting, because you could set up, basically, in front of Arcanine, and there's no Snarl as well, like Water Terra Golden Go, for example. I don't know if that actually will be, like, a super good solution, but I was just kind of theorying, and I thought it would be kind of interesting into this composition, especially if you have a way to heal the Golden Go, like a Pollen Puff from your own Amoongus, for example. But, yeah, generally, Ghost-type Pokemon valuable. A Golden Go in particular by the way is interesting because of its ability so it's just straight up immune to the perish song which is kind of nice obviously if you defensively tear a golden go then you might actually get trapped in by shadow tag so keep that in mind you can also use moves like volt switch or u-turn to pivot out against the got tell obviously and so that can be helpful on a team as well and you can even consider things like a shed shell for example though i would say that's a little bit more niche but i think a unique ghost terror on an offensive attacker can also be really interesting so that's one thing i'll call out Another thing to highlight is that this team has Protect on every single Pokemon, right? And so you can consider using Faint to break through Protect uh, and make it a lot harder for the team to actually stall you out if Parasong goes up. And in general, Faint, I think, is just strong into a team that has Protect on everything, basically. So that's one other thing to call out. I think another thing is if you watch kind of the regional streams... Sometimes it's really hard to safely switch in Got the Tell, right? For example, I remember watching games where like there would be Volcarona or King Gambit out on the field, and essentially if Got the Tell switched into the wrong slot and ate up like a super effective Bug Buzz or Kowtow Cleave, for example, it would be in a really tricky situation. Uh, however, in most of the games, essentially, Wolf was able to switch in Got the Tell in turns where it was at slight risk of getting knocked out. And so I think if you're playing against this, you have to constantly think, okay, can Got the Tell switch in right now? Because this team can essentially win in a single turn if you basically don't prepare for a got to tell switch in one of these pokemon clicks perish song then the next turn you can just go fake out and like disable for example or you know just start just protecting and then you're going to be in a really bad spot so you have to be really proactive and specifically thinking okay how can got to tell come out can it come out safely and if it can't come out safely can i knock it out and like cover for you know a pokemon switching into it for example i think that's one of the things you have to think about most when you're fighting against this team because got to tell is what really i think is like holds the team together in terms of the glue and makes it so much harder to just like, kind of you know get through the parish song and so that's one thing that i think you should be proactive in thinking about as well finally i would say that you know this team does have a lot of offense but sometimes you end up with like got the tell amoongus and the scream tail right and these three really don't do much damage uh, the remaining three pokemon i'd say are like the strongest attackers with the team but if you're able to kind of knock out uh the strong attackers early and like then you know you're stuck with like a defensive core in the back it can be really difficult to actually claw back from positions like that as well so think about where the damage is coming from and now obviously this team is public for example if you're using flutter main be a little bit uh more wary of just leading it because palafin plus the scream tail can obviously uh, be really really hard to fight against and so yeah those are some things to mention i think like you know, King Gambit is pretty scary, uh, but this team certainly has answers for it, but that's one Pokemon I think is, um, can be tough. Golden Gold can be scary, but once again, you have the Arcanine to deal with it as well, and so it's kind of about how you position against those Pokemon, or if you're using those Pokemon, how you utilize them properly. So, yeah, those are just a couple of things that I've noted. Let's now get into the battles. <laughs> Vince Sneasel has got to be one of the funniest names I've seen. Uh, they've got Grimmsnarl and Nihilape. Rory Moon, Volcarona, Fluttermane, and the Iron Hands. So double ghost means that I can't really perish that easily. I think I like, for example, like Palafin. 
Screen Tail. Yeah, I mean, I just don't really love Got the Tail here into Annihilate. I think I want to go with these four, uh, like the, the offensive, most offensive core for this team. Because Palafin plus Screamtail can threaten the Fluttermane for a knockout immediately. I could always just pivot out into Arcanine as well. Yeah, I think it's actually fairly unlikely I actually try to perish, at least not early on. The dual ghost just makes it that much tougher to bring Gothitelle. Especially because in a best of one closed team sheet environment, I don't know what Terra type the Annihilate is, right? I say that makes things pretty challenging. Uh, one thing to look out for here is the Palafin just doing large amounts of damage, especially if we, you know, transform it. But if they go with, like, I don't know, the double ghost lead immediately, I can immediately pressure Fluttermane with a play rough and a jet punch. I think one of the things to also be proactive about here is considering who to Terra. Palafin, Terra, plus play rough, even in baby form, will just KO the Fluttermane. Grimstar on Volcarona. Okay. Uh, this feels like it'll likely be a... I don't know. Grass Volcarona Terra, potentially. You know, if I had got the toe here, I actually totally could just switch it in and click Parish Song immediately, but it's obviously not the case here. Uh, this could be Quiver Dance. I do kind of expect them to Terra. Um, I actually like just switching out into Arcanine. Arcanine Flare Blitz is really good damage in a Volcarona, and I'm actually just going to go for Play Rough immediately on a Grim Snarl. See, so yeah, it's interesting. I think, like, one of the things about this team is, do you bring Gothitelle or not, right? And in this matchup, I didn't feel super comfortable doing so because they had the dual ghost, but if I had Gothitelle here, I think I'd be able to actually perish them fairly easily. Okay, Volcarona actually decided not to go for a... Terra, and I miss Play Rough as well. Good start. <laughs> and it's Fiery Dance Volcarona. That's cool. Okay. Um. Yeah, Missing's a little disappointing, but it's fine. Arcanine's pretty well protected right now. I'm happy to just Flare Blitz Grimmsnarl and then protect. Volcarona switches, sure. Into Roaring Moon. Okay. Nice job on them to actually not bring the ghost types. I'm surprised by that. Uh, Protosynthesis. Attack boost. Okay. Yeah, like what's interesting here is who do you Terra if you're my opponent? That's cool. Misty Terrain. To prevent burn from Will-O-Wisp. Uh, from Arcanine. Some damage on a Grim Snarl. Mm -hmm. I've got Fluttermane in the back. Also, that really means I don't think you'll have any. Like, Grim Snarl shouldn't have a good. Or shouldn't have, like, Thunder Wave, for example, which is good for Fluttermane in the back. Um, just protect it with you. I could see like an earthquake coming out. I kind of want to scout out for their Terra personally. So I'm down to protect and then just play rough into Roaring Moon. I think Roaring Moon should Terra here. But here's the interesting thing, right? You just Terra with Roaring Moon. So Palafin now is looking really powerful into my opponent's team. And it's flying Terra. Okay. Here's the other interesting thing. Now that you're flying, you're not actually immune to the Will-O-Wisp from Arcanine. So we're going to protect. Play rough for some minimal damage. They acrobatics into Arcanine. Cool. Probably Spirit Break into Screamtail. I think the main thing I'm curious about is whether or not they have Earthquake. Because I am willing to go for Will-O-Wisp onto Roaring Moon and disable their acrobatics. Given the lack of ghost types so far, by the way, like, it is likely I can end the game with Parish Song from either the Fluttermane or the Screamtail. I'm 
wonder how much play rough would have done into Grim Snarl. Probably would have survived. Okay, Roaring Moon commits Protect. Three, I mean, I'm, oh, I'm okay with this because, like, they're not really getting that much. And I am slowly stalling out Reflect, which is pretty valuable. But could Protect from there, and I could have maybe read into that, doubled up into Grim. But I don't mind Grim Snarl sticking on the field for now, honestly. It's not that bad. Let's just keep track of Reflect turns for now. It's the last turn, but it's likely Light Clay here. Um, okay, I'm down to extreme speed. I also am not convinced Acrobatics actually KOs Arcanine, truthfully. And I don't actually KO about, but care about KOing Grimmsnarl, so I'm actually still down to will o wisp Roaring Moon here, and then play rough into Grimmsnarl. Grim switches, okay. Makes sense. Volcarona coming back out. It's gonna be Flutter main. Uh, play rough into Flutter main is honestly really nice. I'm happy about that. Yeah, that's really solid damage. Oh! We're just straight up faster than their Roaring Moon. Okay. <laughs> that makes the game a lot easier for me. I think Palafin cleans up this game at this point. I can just Terra it and kind of blast everything. Yeah, now Arcanine definitely does not get KO'd. Well, that's a pleasant surprise. Although, honestly, I think Arcanine getting knocked out there is not even bad for me because then I get a free switch in. Uh, they are indeed Light Clay there, so good to confirm that. I'm happy to... Let's think this through. I can double protect to just stall out another turn of burn, stall out another turn of reflect. But I actually don't mind having Screamtail out right now and actually just Flare Blitzing into Fluttermane. Yeah. I think it's basically time for Palafin. At this point, we've burnt their main attacker as well. And having the priority means I think it's just going to be really difficult for them to deal with Palafin. They actually end up Shadow Balling to Screamtail as well, which makes this even better for us. So... Yeah, the Arcanine outspeeding Rory Moon here, I think, just changes everything. Even if we were slower, I think I'd still be in okay shape. Also, it looked like I might have survived that Acrobatics. Um, would have been able to get the burn onto them. Rory Moon Acrobatics, honestly, its damage output feels fairly underwhelming every time I try it out. So Arcanine goes down. Cool. We've seen Spirit Break, Dual Screen. Well, I guess we never saw the uh, Light Screen technically, but I'm sure it's got Light Screen. So let's just go into Palafin now. And Palafin should be able to just sweep everything. Basically, if the burn didn't happen, my opponent would have a little bit more like offensive pressure. But like, it's fine, right? Uh, and so I'm just going to Terra Water Palafin here. I think there's not really any incentive to Terra Grass or Steel here. Terra Water... I'm honestly happy to just jet punch the Volcarona and click Parish Song right now. Oh, actually, maybe I should be careful about clicking Parish Song. Mainly because if Screamtail goes down, that could be a little bit awkward. So I think it's actually probably slightly more optimal to Terra here, jet punch into Volcarona, protect. Yeah. Because, like, they essentially can't really thread in the Palafin. Like, the only thing I'm worried about would be them being Focus Sash and then having Will-O-Wisp. Or, I guess, being, like, max HP, max defense, surviving the Jet Punch. So, I could have considered Wave Crashing, but uh, I'd be slower than Volcarona, potentially. This Palafin doesn't even have that much speed investment. And if Volcarona protects, that's fine, right? I don't really mind what is Roaring Moon going to do to me. And they just Rage Powder. Perfect. Cool. It was actually Pasho Berry, though. So if they had Will-O-Wisp, I still don't think they would have been able to win this, to be honest. Yeah, that does so much damage. <laughs> but they get the Flame Body. <laughs> Certainly makes the game more interesting. And here's Acrobatics. Okay. And I get crit. Okay. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let's slow things down a little bit here. Uh, I think Volcarona here probably protects. Wow, wait, that actually... <laughs> How do I... Let's, let's make sure I can actually st still seal up this game right now. Because this just turned it into an actual game. Um...
Okay, I'm just gonna Jet Punch still into Volcarona, and then just Disable into Rory Moon. Alright, they just Rage Fighter. Okay, we're fine. I just had to sweat a little bit after that turn. <laughs> the fact they were Poshul Berry, the Flame Body activated, and they got the critical hit. It was like, all things that we didn't want to see, but even with all of those, I think I still have a big enough lead that I should be okay. And if I survive the turn here, I can just end the game with Parish Song. Although I think um, the... Ooh, you got Dragon Dance. Okay. Dragon Dance Acrobatics. What other offense do you have is my question. Yeah, I also have Focus Sash on the... The Flutter main. So... We should still be okay here. I'm gonna protect Palafin here and then just click Parish Song now. Because of the burn, Parish is actually the easiest way to end this game. I think without the burn, I could have considered just like using Palafin offensively into the Rory Moon, but now that I'm burnt, it's not as easy. Yeah, so you set up Reflect as well, but I don't care about that. Yep, Scream Tail is still faster as well. Rory Moon's just kind of slow here, right? It was slower than Arcanine, slower than Scream Tail at plus one. And they go for Throw Chop, but I'm faster. Cool. Throw Chop, Dragon Dance, Acrobatics. Okay. This should be a game game over, right? Um, I protect Screamtail. Yeah, we Jet Punch here in a Grim Snarl. Protect Screamtail. Palafin faints. Then I bring out Fluttermane, and then I just Moonblast Grim Snarl. And then protect. Oh, they actually protect with Nori Moon even better. Okay. Yeah, this game, like, there were some scary moments, right? I ended up missing play rough on Grimmsnarl to start the game, and then obviously they had the crazy turn with the burn into the crit. But I think we should still be good, since I built up a fairly early lead. And because the Roaring Moon was slower here. Elephant Fanes. By the way, I think this is honestly a good example of a game where, like, let's say you're my opponent shoes and you're practicing, you're like, oh, wow, like, my Roaring Moon's slower. Arcanine, especially the Arcanine on this team, will likely pick up in terms of usage, right? And so, expect to kind of see that EV spread specifically. And that's where kind of meta adaptations happen after a big tournament where, you know, it's like, oh, okay, now I know my opponent has this set. Uh, or, like, this set might be more meta because someone, you know, very popular just won with it. Maybe I consider adjusting my move set accordingly. Um, anyway, here we can just Moonblast Grimmsnarl. Yeah. And might as well go for a double here with Screamtail. There's nothing else to really do with it. Nice, and we even get it. Cool. Not that we needed it, I think. Yeah, so it's like you can throw chop Flutter main, but Moonblast here would just knock out the Grim Snarl. And then now I just protect the Flutter main to guarantee the win. So unless they had a chance to flinch Flutter main there, um, I figured we'd be good. But this ended up being a lot closer than I honestly thought it would, given how good the early lead felt. Because I was expecting to just sweep with Palafin in this endgame, but then they ended up getting the burn, and they had Poshul Berry, and they had Dragon Dance. So all of those was like a nightmare. But yeah. It was funny, coming into this, I wasn't sure if I was going to try to win the game with Parish Song. But in the end, like I actually ended up needing... Or not necessarily needing it, but because they actually had Dragon Dance. Like, if I did not click Parish earlier, I'm not sure I actually had enough damage output into the Roaring Moon there in the end. But I figured I had a guaranteed win there after we had chipped away Grimstar enough. Or even if they set up Light Screen, I think Moonblast would KO. And then we should be good. So, yeah. But I, I'd say the main thing that made this game harder for my opponent was having the Roaring Moon that was slower than the Arcanine. And then me taking advantage of the fact that they Terra'd, turning into a flying type so I could burn them despite Misty Terrain being up. Okay, number 96 on the ladder. And there's a lot of stuff that I don't like to see here, including Fluttermane and Golden Go. Really interesting team for someone so high ranked up on the ladder. It's really cool. Like, the fact that they have Oranguru as well as Murkrow is fascinating to me. Because you have a fast mode with Murkrow 
Golden Glow, Fluttermane, and Azumarill, but then you also have a Trick Room mode with Oranguru, Torkoal, Azumarill, and then you could go with one or Fluttermane or Golden Glow. You could also drop Azumarill and just go to the top four Pokemon. Ah, <sighs> so what do I do here? Arcanine's going to be crucial for Flare Blitz. Generally, how I've dealt with Torkoal is um, like Water, Terra, Gothitelle. Torkoal is actually, I think, not the easiest Pokemon to fight against. And the combination of Torkoal, Golden Go, and Fluttermane scares me here, truthfully. Mm. I kind of like Arcanine Gothitelle here. I'm also considering a Parish user instead, though. I.e. Gothitelle plus Fluttermane. Hmm. Okay, I don't know about this one. I ended up bringing the Palafin instead because I was so worried about the Torkoal. Team preview was really hard here, in my opinion. I'm not. I'm not sure what the best four were. Because like they have Golden Go, they have Dual Ghosts, but they also have Trick Room, but they also have Tailwind. And I wasn't sure how to cover for all three, but I think Palafin Arcanine lead may have been stronger here. Okay, and they go with the Zoomerill and the Fluttermane. Honestly, this is not a terrible lead to go up against, I think. Oh, especially with you being Booster Energy. That's a huge deal, because it means I can just Flare Blitz you. Plus Special Attack is interesting, though. I'm actually pretty worried they just double protect right now. I don't think the booster energy shadow ball should KO Arcanine, but I'm worried about that as well. I think here, if you're my opponent, it makes sense to double protect turn one and then Aqua Jet and Shadow Ball Arcanine turn two. So part of me is interested in actually hard switching into Palafin right now. I mean, Fake Out Flare Blitz is generally safe, but I assume they'll have Protect on both Pokemon here, but they do not Protect with either. Okay. And they Moonblast and Agathitelle. Wow, that turn, I feel like, is so good for us. I'm curious if the Fluttermane has defensive EVs here. Given that it's the Booster Energy set, I honestly would expect it to have some defense. But Flare Blitz just one-shots it. Okay. <laughs> That's a really good start. Um, one thing to still keep in mind, though, is, of course, my opponent has Golden Go potentially in the back, and that's still a pretty big problem for me, but this turn one honestly played out super well. Murkrow comes out. Wow. Okay. Uh, sure. I'm mainly now worried about Belly Drum, I think, from Azumarill. Uh, I could Terra Water this. I could also switch out into Palafin. Tom plus Belly Drum scares me the most, I think. If it is Belly Drum, this actually gets really interesting. Uh, I'm going to switch Arcanine into Palafin. And Psychic into Azumarill. I don't know what the Azumarill set is. Assault Vest was used a decent amount in the previous format. Part of me wanted to just stay in and click Will-O-Wisp. Yeah, they also taunted into Gothitelle. So Will-O-Wisp onto Azumarill probably would have just won me the game there. But I clicked Psychic here, so we'll get some damage. Solid. Oh, and they just Liquidation. Okay. I'll take it. I don't love the defense drop, though. Interestingly enough, I could have considered tearing Arcanine on turn one of this game, by the way. Some food for thought. Taunted. The defense drop is actually kind of pesky. I'll just go out into Arcanine here, honestly. And uh, Psychic into a zoom roll. I, I'm really... Because, like, they don't have that much offense with these two, right? Like... Surprise. But I guess they were like, what else do I bring out? They, Yeah, okay, it makes sense. They didn't want to bring Golden Go. If I had to guess, it might be Specs Golden Go, because they were like, if I bring Golden Go out, it just gets Flare Blitzed and KO'd right now. 
I'll play an Arcanine. Get another Psychic off. And they liquidation into Goth to tell. That works. They still haven't Tailwinded yet. It has to be Golden Golem, the final one, in my opinion. They will Tailwind, I think, to make sure this can outspeed, uh, Murkrow can outspeed. I gotta sequence this properly. Because I can totally get swept by Golden Go still. Oh, I was still taunted. Oops. <laughs> uh, well, we'll see if Psyche goes into Azumar. I, it, this, the, what Gothitel does here actually, I don't think matters too much. <laughs> it's a fake outing. They're probably confused, but um, you know what's interesting here? I actually want them to KO Gothitel, so I get a free switch it into Flutter Main. Yeah, like this actually isn't bad. Basically, I was stuck here being like, do I actually want to click Psychic? And the the reason why I don't is because now I get a free switch it into Flutter Main, which I think is really interesting. I also wonder if Water, Terra, like, double up Jet Punch plus Extreme Speed KOs the Murkrow, but I think Fluttermane's pretty safe to go into right now. If I were them, I would switch Azumarill out right now into Golden Go. But they might want to break Sash, so, like, I'm down to just Extreme Speed here, and then just Moonblast here. I could have also Shadow Balled Azumarill, I think. To cover for Golden Go switching in. Maybe that was the better play. But I, I'm not like 100% confident Golden Go's in the back still. But yeah, there it is. Okay. Yep, they Tailwind. There's Moonblast. Doesn't KO, but Extreme Speed should. Um, We double Protect here. Right? Or just extreme speed Murkrow, let them and protect here. Yeah, I don't think I need to protect Arcanine actually. I think extreme speeding Murkrow and protect Flutter main works. Ah, uh, I should have. It was it was pretty clear Zumro was gonna switch into Golden Go then. It wouldn't make sense for them to have any other Pokemon in the back. Like Orangu and Torque will make no sense in the back here. Uh, Golden Go did in Terra, which I find really interesting. Okay. They just click make it rain. Yeah, that's fine. Hmm. You know, we could grab... Okay. Basically, in this position, if I think the Palafin, Terra Water, Jet Punch, KOs Azumarill, I'll just Terra that. I'm not sure it actually gets the KO, and basically, I'm worried about Aqua Jet from the Golden Go. Not Aqua, sorry, Aqua Jet from Azumarill. So I could actually Ghost Terra the Flutter main instead. Although if I just went Shadow Ball last turn, this game probably would have been over. Uh, actually, in retrospect, it totally was smarter to Shadow Ball there. Because even if you Terra, then Palafin just Terras and knocks you out, I think. Yeah, so I'm thinking Grass Terra Flutter main. Then they Aqua Jet plus make it rain, and I would actually expect to survive that. Protect. Grass Terra. Shadow Ball. I'll zoom real. Because I think Palafin should win the 1v1 one against Golden Go once it's at minus two special attack. But I think I played this game kind of subpar after they brought out Murkrow. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not really happy about how I played it. Especially because I had the ability to burn the Azumarill. It's funny because they ended up having Taunt, but they taunted into the other slot. Yep, so there's Aqua Jet. That still did so much. Okay. Just make it rain. Oh, that did nothing to Fluttermane, though. Wow. 
They still have Interred, by the way, which is also interesting. It's wild seeing Aqua Jet, like, a priority attack. Uh, obviously, Fluttermane's defense is so bad, and its special defense is amazing. But, yeah, that was an interesting way of damage distribution. Uh, now I can just Wave Crash. And... Uh, actually, wait. There's only one more turn of Tailwind, so we should just protect Fluttermane always. I'm fine Jet Punching here. And protect. Jet Punch just to cover for a crit, and then I can just um, Jet Punch Shadow Ball again. Nice damage. And they just click Make It Rain. It was really curious they didn't Terra, though. Like, I thought Flutter main Terra here would make sense. Uh, and I wonder if that would have given them the extra damage that they needed to actually KO Flutter main. Jet Punch. Shadow Ball. But Arcanine was definitely the MVP of this one. I think turn one, like, I had such a big lead. I'm, I'm not really happy about how I played this game, to be honest, because I think, like, it was way too close. And <laughs> that turn with the Gothita, obviously, I timed out as well. But, yeah, like, I I was just thinking... I think the end game was fairly mismanaged by by my end, especially since, I, like I said, I could have nailed the Azumarill switching out. Like, I think Extreme Speed plus Shadow Ball into that slot's okay. I don't really need it. Well, I guess Murkrow Foul Play is, like, a little scary, but I don't think I really need to worry about that too much. So, yeah. Um, but I think the main thing was that we just knocked out the... Like, turn one worked out so well for us, right? They, they didn't even Shadow Ball until it got the tell, and so we essentially had the trap. But they were probably expecting a Terra from the uh, got the tell, if I had to guess. So, yeah. Okay, Murkrow, Fluttermane, Mimikyu, Great Tusk, Iron Moth, and Brute Bonnet. Double Ghost. Double Ghost, Double Ghost. And Tailwind. Normally when I see a Fluttermane, I immediately think of Palafin plus the... Um, yeah, Palafin plus the Screamtail. I think Amoongus is worth considering here for a Spore. We could tear it as well, but I also kind of want Arcanine. I'm not so confident on Gothito here, given the dual ghosts. I also wonder if they actually Tailwind. I don't know, Murkrow plus the Fluttermane on their end, I think is a decently solid lead. It could be, like, Ghost Terra with Murkrow as well. I mean, honestly, Amoongus having Mentor up here is really helpful. It just feels a little bit bad to not bring Arcanine, given the number of physical attackers that they have on their team. Mainly Brute Bonded, Great Tusk. But I really want Amoongus in this, I think. I also think leading Amoongus may have been better, especially thanks to Mentor, because my opponent's team is honestly fairly fast-paced and offensive. Did they go Fluttermane and Mimikyu? Okay, I actually will gladly take that. Uh, Water Terra is something to consider here immediately to try to guarantee the knockout onto this. I think a double protect is also okay here, turn one. Just got out for what they want to do. It'd be great to bait out a protect from their flutter main. But I basically want to double protect turn two, consider water terra palafin, jet punch plus play rough into flutter main. And this is why I did not want to bring Gothitelle until the matchup would have been terrible into this. But the main thing to think about with the Terra is if I give up the Terra, I can't Dark Terra with the Moongus, meaning if Iron Moth is in the back, things can get a little bit more awkward. They are actually going to commit a Terra here. Interesting. Oh, Grass? Huh. Okay. Um, That doesn't really change anything for me right now. Although it means the Water, Terra, Play, Rough Play would have worked. But I honestly think I'm going to go for it next turn. Because it feels like my opponent is just not respecting the offense from Palafin. And I feel like if you're going for that Terra, you're just going all in with your offense right now. Yeah, so they just Dazzle. Okay. I don't know. The roll is really favorable for us in getting the knockout. Even without Terra on Palafin. But that's if they don't have any defenses. 
They just Shadow Claw. Okay, that is totally okay with me. How good is Palafin offensively into my opponent's team now that they Terra? It's really good, actually. So I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to play rough. Water Terra, Jet Punch. The only thing I'm worried about is they now protect and then will o But if they do that, that'll be frustrating because, like, turn one, it feels like they're just not respecting the amount of offense that I have, right? And what I didn't want to do is double up onto the Fluttermane and then get hit by a will o -Wisp. Oh, they sw Okay, oh, but this could be Brute Bonnet coming out. Nope, Slitherwing. Okay. I honestly think if Fluttermane does not protect here, I wouldn't, I, don't, I wouldn't call the game quite yet, but I, I think Palafin is already looking so strong. But my opponent's team is so hyper-offensive, there's just so much damage to worry about. Nice, they don't protect. Okay, huge. So we get Water Terror Boosted Jet Punch into Fluttermane. Beautiful. And Play Rough doesn't miss. Perfect. Like, the reason I went for that is because my opponent just showed no respect for this play on turn 1. Meaning that on turn 2, I wasn't thinking they'd be too worried about it either. I honestly was kind of surprised to see the Fairy Terra. Because it's like, you, you get a little bit of extra damage and you get rid of your Ghost Typing. But, I don't know how valuable that was against this duo in particular. But, I think them committing the Terra like that already puts me into a much better position. Okay, so Brute Bonnet comes out now. Um... I have Parasong, I have Amoongus, but I obviously can't Terra that at this point. Brute Bonnet is slightly annoying. I'm fine, I think, just protecting both Pokemon here to once again scout off for what they want to do. And then and then I can like potentially disable. Like Screamtail having disable opens up so many lines of play. Okay. Bonnet actually protects. They'd go for energy ball, sure. Um This is interesting because like you do have a spore potentially with this right now. They might rage powder. I don't mind, I think, switching... Oh, actually, I think disabling in general is valuable here. Would it disable a Rage Powder? Should they go for that? Yeah. I'll disable and switch out, because I think Palafin offensively right now looks really solid in the end game, and they actually switch Iron Moth, okay. I'll gladly take that. I mean, Palafin just has to worry about Energy Ball plus Bullet Seed right now from both Pokemon, right? But now, late game Palafin is looking really good with close combat. Amoongus is also now super well positioned into both. So, Disable uh, is now going to disable Rage Powder. Or, sorry, Protect. And they Seed Bomb. Seed Bomb over Bullet Seed is interesting. Okay. Uh, I can Spore now into you. Yeah, I'm going to Protect here because I don't want to get Spored quite yet. Um, but Protect and Spore and a Mimikyu. I could also consider Pollen Puff here, honestly. Especially, actually, because your Protect is disabled. But I think Protect here, Spore into Mimikyu is safe. It's just in a closed team shoot environment. I don't know if Mimikyu is like safety goggles. Okay, so they switch back out into Moth. Basically, I'm just looking for one more knockout then to click Parish Song with, or to just get Palafin out and start dealing damage with that. Does Moth have Goggos here is my question then? Yep. Explore into us. Cool. No Goggles? Okay. If there are no Goggles, then here I can just play rough Pollen Puff into Brute Bonnet. Okay, nice. Play rough. You can't protect. Puff. Yeah, the thing about this team is if you get a quick knockout, man, you can really push the tempo so quickly. Okay, we missed player off. It's a little annoying, but whatever. It's mainly annoying because, like, I do actually need to push the tempo a little bit right now, and, like, they might get a one-turn wake with Slitherwing, which scares me. 
but Palm Puff's honestly going to do a ton of damage here. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, so we would have gotten the knockout there. And if we get the KO, I think Palafin just hard wins from that point, but it's fine. I think maybe this turn I shouldn't have rushed it as much. I think considering switching Amoongus out actually could be okay, or just protecting there. But... Yeah, like if they stay asleep, then I also get the knockout here, and the odds are overwhelmingly my favor because that was the first turn of sleep. So yeah, cool. They just seed bomb into a Moongus. so they're probably reading a Moongus switching out into um, Palafin there. Honestly, I can respect that play from my opponents in because they might be thinking, okay, I'm already so far behind in this game, so if, if there's any chance of me coming back, I kind of have to go for like a Hail Mary play. But that's exactly what I don't want to do. I know the one way I could throw this game is if I like switch in Palafin carelessly. I'd rather let them, you know, knock out Amoongus and get the free switch in. So Mimikyu comes out now. I'm happy to just try to Parish Song and Protect. It's a 4v2. I, I don't even think we need Parish Song to win this game. I think Palafin actually cleans up at this point, but I'd rather still go the like try to go for it they just heat wave okay do get crit and I stay asleep interesting that's fine uh however this actually means I'm probably not gonna go with the perish song angle like for Mimikyu Yeah, so I can just bring out Palafin now. Okay. Wait, also, they outsped the... Screamtail. I don't remember if I stayed in with <laughs> Screamtail the entire battle. It's already been, like, 10 plus minutes. Uh, like, I'm happy to just Jet Punch here into the Moth. And Spore and a Mimikyu. I would expect Jet Punch to KO, honestly, but let's see. Nice. Yeah, so this is what I was saying. I didn't necessarily need Parish Song to win, but, you know, if the... If we wake up that last turn, then the game's just immediately over. But I think what won us this game was just knocking out the Flutter main on turn two. It was really difficult for my opponent to come back from that angle. But I, I think all the Pokemon we brought... Oh, I guess in the end, like, I didn't even really bring out Flutter main. Uh, now we can just jet punch again. Solve Pollen Puff. And that's game over. Yeah, I'd say the, the Fairy Terra was what really caught me off guard. Because I think, like, it also gave up any defensive Terras they could have had with Brute Bonnet or the Fluttermain. Or, sorry, not Fluttermain. Brute Bonnet, Mimikyu, or the um, Iron Moth. And then without any defensive Terras from that, Palafin just looked so good in this end game. So, yeah. Sometimes you don't actually need Parasong to win with this team, right? And against my opponent's team here, just playing offensively and knocking out that Fluttermane immediately put us in a much better spot. But like I said, things could have been dicey if they actually had like will -O for example, in Mimikyu. But given that they were the Life Orb set, I wouldn't be surprised if there was just no will -O on that set whatsoever. So yeah, let's keep things going. Oh, Sandy Shocks, Iron Valley, and King Gambit. I mean, the first thing I noticed is that they don't actually have a ghost Pokemon, but King Gambit is kind of scary for this team, mainly because it has a lot of good damage into most Pokemon. Now, Palafin has close combat into it, which is kind of neat, but they also have Sandy Shocks, which scares me. Um, I do think Gothitelle trapping things in here immediately is fairly valuable. I'm personally actually thinking about a Gothitelle plus um, Screamtail lead because I can fake out potentially in a Parish Song immediately, which I think is interesting here. I want Fluttermane in the back. All of the final Pokemon in the back are decent. I think Amoongus is the one I like the least because they have Max Caliber and the Paradox Delibird Iron Bundle. Is it between Palafin and Arcanine? Uh, I think I like Arcanine a little bit more here. 
I, I think Palafin is okay, especially if I lead it. So, I don't know. I think I easily could have considered, like, a Gothitelle Palafin lead here. But I'm basically going with Fake Out plus Screamtail because they don't have ways to get out of um, Trick Room very easily. Or, sorry, not Trick Room, Parish Song very easily. Okay. I don't mind seeing this too much, right? Sandy Shocks, Photosynthesis. Speed or special attack? Speed. I am speed. Uh, so they're both pretty speedy here. I don't think I need a Steel Terra here, right? A Flash Cannon shouldn't KO me. Because I, I want to just Fake Out plus Perish Song on turn one. I'm going to fake out this. Just Parish Song. I'm worried about Ghost Terra on Iron Valiant or Covert Cloak right now. Get protected. I actually think if I just clicked Fake Out into Sandy Shocks there, they would have been in so much trouble. Because then I fake out Parish Song, Double Protect turn 2, and consider Steel Terra, Heal Pulse turn 3, Double Protect turn 4. It's just gravity, though. Okay. Uh, There's Hypnosis coming out, though, right? I mean, I'm fine with that. Like, you got your gravity set up, but where do you go from there? Uh, This next turn, I'm just double protecting for sure. Yeah, I mainly need to see what they're trying to do on turn 2, because I just don't know what, what I'm to expect from this duo. I've never fought both of these on the same uh, team at the same time. Terra here. What is it going to be? Ghost Terra is what I was talking about earlier. That was kind of scary. Ah, they actually are Ghost Terra. Okay. Mm. Good anti-meta stuff. Well, that makes this game a lot more interesting, but yeah, it goes to show how a good Terra can obviously change the outcome of a battle, potentially. Sneak into Gothitelle. Thunderbolt into it as well. Smart. Okay, yeah, this game just got so much more interesting. I don't expect to survive a Shadow Sneak and Thunderbolt, personally. Uh, I don't want to Terra yet, honestly. Yeah, I kind of want to just Psychic and uh, play rough into this right now. Oh, they didn't Shadow Sneak. And I get paired. That's probably fine. I mean, they're probably just KOing that slot anyway. I don't really do much with play rough. That has Hypnosis. Huh. That's cool. Yeah, I just have no experience fighting against this at all. So I'm kind of getting... Run out of the loop right now. Perish down to one for everyone. You would expect them to, you know, switch out Iron Valiant. It's kind of awkward because I don't want Fluttermane to just come in and take damage, but I think I kind of have to. I don't want to give up either Pokemon. Screamtail's in a really awkward spot now. Okay, I will switch Gothitelle out for Arcanine, and then Screamtail for Fluttermane. Surely Iron Valiant switches out here. So you can see, like, if they didn't have the Ghost Terra, then this next turn, they just lose both Pokemon, right? But the Ghost Terra just changes the dynamic of everything right now, so... That uh, Ghost Terra Shadow Sneak also really scary into Fluttermane. King Gambit comes out. 
Oh, I maybe should have thought about the way I sequenced that. I am now going to give King Gambit a Defiant boost. I didn't want Fluttermane's Sash to be broken was the main thing here. Yeah. Oh, and I get Parrot again. Oof, 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 oof. <laughs> uh, this is looking pretty rough, honestly. That Para means I will likely not be able to outspeed King Gambit and will o -Wisp it. Ah, man. Steam had a lot of interesting things. Ghost Terra was the main thing, but also these Thunders just getting so many Paras. Uh... I actually don't really see a great way to win this. Now, like, the way they position these two is really well done. Uh, if I had Palafin here, given that they committed their Terra, like, close combat would have been really strong. And basically, like, if I weren't paralyzed, I would water Terra Will-O-Wisp this. But because of the paralysis, it's looking a lot tougher. But what I can do is at least trap both Pokemon in and Perish Song right now. So I think I'm just going to go for it. But I think the problem is King Gambit being at plus one attack is a nightmare for me. So, would have been interesting to see how this game would have played out if I did not eat up that para. Oh, they tried to sucker punch though, okay. Oh, and Blizzard, that's really cool because of gravity, yeah. Okay, so I've at least got and got the towel out. I still don't think I can actually pull this off though. Maybe with some double protects. Oh, you know what? Because Arcanine's low HP, essentially, like, if I double protect, sacrifice Arcanine, and then come back out, we can maybe pull off something. The other thing is, I'm actually not sure I beat Iron Valiant in this endgame with any of these Pokemon. Like, it could actually sweep my entire team, which is really crazy to say. Um... Yeah, like, the para on Goth is also annoying, because if King Gambit didn't have speed investment, can actually potentially heal Pulse, but that's also not the case. Okay, so protect. Protect. And then the idea is the next turn, swap Goth the Tell out. Sacrifice Arcanine. They just Blizzard again. Are you Specs? Why are, like, Blizzard is so inconsistent otherwise? I feel like that might be the case. That's how yeah. yeah, so I can actually, I can probably knock out both of these mons. <sighs> Fluttermane is just going to faint to a Shadow Sneak though is the problem. So they switch Got the Tail out into Arcanine right now. Switch into Arcanine and go for the double protect. They could miss Blizzard as well, actually. Yeah, I'm fine with the double here. I think this is pretty hard to win. I don't see a clear win condition against Iron Valley, and because it can just shadow sneak it can it can just destroy everything we have right now, basically. Also the uh, well, if I don't get the double and Blizzard hits Fluttermane, like, ideally, we get the double or they miss Blizzard, but then they target the Arcanine slot. Okay, so Protect doesn't go off. Alright, they actually went for Hydro Pump. So yeah, uh, it was correct to double there. I'll tap leave, yep. Yeah, the problem is I just don't think I actually beat the... Whoa, I could win with Perish Song, right? If... How fast is Iron Valiant relative to me? <laughs> Screamtail also hasn't even taken sleep turns, which is the other part of the problem. 
But you can see how uh, Ghost Terror can change things, right? And that's one of the ways you can counter uh, Perish a little bit. And in, in Team Preview, I would have never guessed a Ghost Terror and Iron Valiant. Iron Valiant in general is just not very common, so I really like how my opponent's running it. Palafin would have been really interesting in this one, I think, especially since they committed their Ghost Terror like that. Um... Oh, wait. You can just Kowtow Cleave Screamtail right now and Hydro Pump Gothitelle. So, I actually think I have to... Because I have to burn a turn of sleep here, right? I'm actually going to Water Terra here to try to survive a Hydro Pump and then Fake Out into King Gambit for the double KO. I don't think we saw any... Um, we didn't see any confirmation on the rest of Iron Valiant set, right? But the thing is, that basically what I'm hinging off uh, and what I'm hoping for is that it's faster and I can win the game with Parish Song from Screamtail. Okay, I don't get fully paired, but did they freeze drag off the tail or did they hydro pump it? Oh! Oh, that, that also works. But does Iron Valiant just KO my Screamtail is the question now? Probably. Oh, man, Iron Valiant with Ghost Terror is so strong. It is so good here. Basically, my best bet would have been to conserve Flutter Main. Well, that's what I was trying to go for, but I didn't get the double protect earlier. Not sure it would have made a difference, though. So Iron Valiant's out. Yeah, I mean, basically, I'm going to click Perish Song here. Is there any... How, how can I win this? Like, I have to hope for them to miss target. I have Heal Pulse, right? So, like, the odds aren't in my favor right now because I have to wake up. But basically, with Gothitelle, I'm contemplating, okay, do I want to protect here, hoping they just target Gothitelle down? Or do I hope they target Screamtail and I survive and then I just get a Heal Pulse off? I think I'm going to go for the latter here. Okay, they go for Sneak. I, I, this might just KO us, honestly. Okay, we survive? Okay? Oh my gosh, if that's their best offense into us, I actually may have been able to win this game. We don't get Parrot. Oh, that's huge. Oh my gosh, this was the win con I was playing towards. Okay, three turns down for everyone. I also have Disable, so I can Disable your Shadow Sneak. Protect. Protect. I'm just worried about a pair on Gothitelle, basically. Oh, does Iron Valiant get Swords Dance? I have, like... This is actually, like, one of my first times fighting against it in general. Okay, they just closed combat. It comes down to who's faster between Screamtail and Iron Valiant. I'm taking the gamble that they're out faster than us, but this Screamtail is really speedy, so I'm not sure that's actually the case. Um, so they're going to close combat Gothitelle. I don't... I think Play Rough really KOs. Or, I mean, really does much at all. Oh, okay, wait. If I were faster here, I could disable your close combat. So, so the correct play is to disable. And if your Iron Valley is faster, I win with the Protect on Screamtail next turn. Yeah. Heal Pulse. Oh, they ended up forfeiting. I think they, could, they should have played out this turn because I didn't know who was faster yet. Oh, I can't believe we found that win. Oh, that feels so good. I thought it was so doomed after the start of the battle. But yeah, basically, like, if my opponent clicked close combat into Gothitelle, I would have lost this game. And that's why I didn't protect. That's I needed the heal pulse to get that extra recovery off so I could survive a subsequent shadow sneak. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what a battle. What a battle. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. So thank you so much, as always, for watching. I hope I did the team justice. It's, you know, obviously quite difficult to pilot. 
I'm fairly happy about how I played across the four games. I mainly think game two, <laughs> obviously I timed out uh, that turn with Gatatel, so that was like the one mistake. Um, but I also feel like I should have just had that game one after I knocked out the Flutter main and it was way too close for comfort, especially given that they actually didn't even commit uh, a Terra. And so, yeah, like, I feel like that match could have been a lot cleaner after turn one, and I feel like I lost a lot of pressure, and like I mentioned, I had the ability to potentially will with the Azumarill and stay in with Arcanine, but then I switched out, and yeah, things got kind of dicey, and yeah, I was curious if they were steal Golden Go. I think Flutter Me may have still actually been able to survive the Make It Rain, but it would have been a lot closer, uh, and so game two, I feel like things were really in my control and kind of slipped out of my control. Uh, I think there was a lot of room for improvement post turn one in that match. Still ended up with a win, so I'm happy about it, but uh, it's always good to, you know, reassess and look at what you could have done better but that was the wildest game to end on and I'm, I'm really happy to have had that one so thank you so much as always for watching thanks of course to wolf for building and sharing this team it is truly one of the best teams uh that i've tried but like i mentioned you know this is uh, not an easy team to pilot and so good luck if you are trying it out yourselves congrats once again to wolf for winning regionals and i'll see you all soon all right peace